I was younger, I was always doing breaking in this. Like all the time, man, you know, I was fucking dirty on a break. I loved it. Like the older boys from my area, they just used to always, they just, like, they used to like, call me breaking in, you know? They're like, Have you looked, was that you that done that? And I'm like, yeah, 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 having a laugh, you know? Like, and then, yeah, I just got the, like, people just used to call me Enter. And I don't know, it just sort of stuck. Like my real, my actual rap name is Breaking Enter. That's what I, that's what I first called myself when I started rapping, Breaking Enter. But then I just shortened it, you know, to Enter. So um, I was gonna call myself Break, but there's a graffiti writer. His name's Break, so I can't steal his name, you know. So I just come up with Enter, and then yeah, like that's how I got my name. I was always just breaking into shit when I was a kid, cars and and real estate agents and all that sort of stuff, just stupid shit. But yeah. I was always doing them. Got pinned for a couple of them as well. My real name's Michael. I'm a father, really. Um, I work, I have a job, and on the side I do music. I didn't grow up in Sydney. I was actually born in um, Western Australia, in Kalgoorlie. Um, and then I left there when I was two. And me and my mum and my brother, we moved to Newcastle, like a little town just in, near Newcastle called Maitland. And uh, I was there till I was about 10, but um, the childhood, my mum was an alcoholic, um, in and out of like rehab, um, had, a, had like, you know, uh, on and off battles with drugs, um, thought she could find God, didn't work, and then went back to find God again, didn't work. Grew up in like the whole housing system, so like anybody that's lived in that situation knows what that can be like. Um, but it was like, you know, my mum did the best she could with, with us boys, you know what I mean? Like, um, we never went without, she done the, she done the best she could. Um, she was like a perfect mum. Uh, we, 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 we had a pretty good, like, we did, we had a good childhood, you know? Even though we had, like, bad times, we still had a good childhood. And then when I was about 10, yeah, she passed away and then I moved, uh, I moved up to Sydney with my um, auntie. My mum always told me, you know, like, when I was a kid, I, I remember things vaguely. She always told me, you know, like, just make sure you're always there for your kids, you know, like, you've got to be the man that your dad wasn't. So I try to be the best, the, the, the best dad I can just for her, you know, like, I've got five kids and, like, unfortunately, she'll never ever get to meet any of them. So I've got to, I've got to, you know what I mean? I've got to stick by what she said as, as, as stepping up to the plate and being a dad for them kids. So the impact that she had was just, um, it was a lot. Like, everything I do as a dad, She's like for my kids, but it's also as well to make her proud, you know what I mean? And show her that, you know, like I did what you asked. Like I, I, I was that I was that man that my dad wasn't. I was that man that your dad wasn't. I'm there in my kids' lives every day, like since the day they've been born. And my eldest daughter's 13. Um, so <clears throat> she's had a massive impact on my life, you know? Like everything I've like achieved in life, I've just wanted to do to show her that like, you know what I mean? Even though you did the best you could when we were growing up and not everything worked out for us. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna make it work out for me and my family, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's just all about proving to her that I've done what she couldn't do. In, in, a, in a good way, like, don't worry, don't stress too much, you know what I mean? Like, I'll take over from here, so. I didn't meet my real dad till I was about 15. Yeah, about 15, I flew over to Perth and um, he was meant to meet me at the airport and he didn't meet me, he wasn't there. So, um, I had to get a hotel that night in Perth, like my uncle, my uncle ended up coming to meet me, my dad's brother, who I never met, you know, so I've just got on a plane for five hours and flew to another state and meeting people I don't even know. So I had to stay in a hotel and then the next day get on a bus for 17 hours to where he lived, he lived in some little town, I don't even know where. And it was very awkward, you know, um, nothing in common, just, yeah, like I, I never had a, a father figure growing up, so I didn't know how to take that on, you know, and he tried to be a dad. And, you know, but I just couldn't have a bar of it. Like, I just, it was awkward for me to have a person like that try and be a dad when you've never had it, you know? So, um, yeah, no, he was never around. He left my mum when when I was two. We took off, got remarried, had some kids. Um, and, yeah, he, he just lives in Perth now. He lives on, in, 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 on some farm. Mm. You said you have five kids, man. What do yeah. your kids mean to you? Oh, man, my kids are everything. Um, if I, I don't know where I'll be without my kids, I'd probably be in jail or dead. Um, they're just a real, they're a real barrier between normal life and fucking up, you know what I mean? Like, if you go to fuck up, I always, every time I go to fuck up, I think of my kids, like, hey, 
you know what I mean? What are they going to do without you? You know what I mean? So you, you, you want to th rethink about what you're doing. They're everything to me, you know? If, if like, everything I do is for them. Everything. Um, yeah, I just, I couldn't imagine. Couldn't imagine uh, uh, every day waking up not seeing my kids, you know? Like, there's these people out there, they've got kids and they don't want nothing to do with them. You know what I mean? Like, they have a chance to see their kids and they don't. They'd rather go out or they'd rather sit in jail. Or they get out of jail and they go home for a week and then they, they see their kids for a week and then they go back out and they fuck up and they're back in jail again, you know what I mean? Kids growing up without their dads, it's a thing that's got to stop, you know? Like, everyone needs a dad. You know what I mean? There's some things that, there's, there's things that a dad can teach you that your mum can't. So, I've got to be there for mine. So, yeah. You've been in prison before? Yeah. Um, what was that experience like for you? The first time I went, I was freshly 18. I got charged for uh, reckless wounding. Um, and common assault and affray. Um, and they sent me straight to Long Bay in the maximum security part. I don't know, it was like, I, I, when, when I got refused bail and that, I was on the truck and I've gone to like Silverwater first for the, as you go on for the intake and that, and then I was at Silverwater in the, in the, the Darcy. It's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a pod for when you first come in off the street. I was there for a couple of days and about three, four days, and then they buzzed me up. They said, oh, you pack your shit, you're going on a truck. I was like, all right, sweet, you know? So I went down, I said, where am I going? I said, you're going Long Bay. So I right, sweet. So I got to Long Bay, man, and I'm, as we're driving in, I'm like handcuffed trying to look out the window. And all you can see is like sandstone and just um, black garbage bags stuck to the fucking razor wire on the, on the fence. And it's just a real ugly look. And you get in there, man, it's just cold. But the feeling, I was, like, to be honest, I was scared, you know what I mean? Like, I'm 18, like, I've just come, I've, like, I've just, got, I've gotten into a fight with someone, you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah, he got hurt, and so, like, one day I'm at home, the next day I'm in jail, like, with some of the worst, worst criminals in, in Australia, you know? Like, maximum security, long bay, and I'm sitting there thinking, fuck, man, like, what's going to happen, you know? Like, I'm sitting there thinking, fuck. And I had brand new shoes on my feet too. And I'm thinking, fuck, what do I do with my shoes? Like, what, what, what do I do? And in that situation, most people, they just bail. You know what I mean? They put their hand up and say, I can't be in here, I gotta go. You know what I mean? They go to the boneyard, they go to protection, whatever. But um, that, didn't, that didn't cross my mind, to be honest. But I was scared, like, to be honest. Like, anyone, that, anyone that goes to jail and says they're not scared, they're a liar. So yeah, I, 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 I was scared, man. I was sitting there thinking, fuck, like, what do I do? This and that. And then, so they've taken me in. <clears throat> And I went straight to Nine Wing. And when I got in there, I was walking up this, like, it's, it's old, it's old jail, you know? So you walk in and you got like, it's like a rectangle. And it's got levels and it's got stairs in the middle at the front. And um, as I'm walking up the cell, up the, up the doors, uh, up the stairs, I look to the right and I see the cell door. And I look at the min card and it's my uncle, it's Schemo's dad. He's there, you know, I knew he was there, but I didn't know I was going to be put with him. So I've knocked on his door and that, and I'm like, I'm here, you know? And like all, short, like all of a sudden they've like opened the door, they're like, yeah, you're in with him, you know? So I was like, oh, sweet. So I sort of felt a sense of relief there, you know? Like I had people I knew there, he was there with all his mates. <clears throat> so, and then the next day, like, that's the first time I've ever been in jail too. I never done juvie. So I just walked into the yard and I didn't like, it was just a spin out, you know? Everyone's fucking cutting back and forth. You got someone on the phone fighting with his missus. You got fucking some bloke in the corner having a shot. And I'm like, fuck, you know what I mean? Like I've seen all that sort of shit before in the street, but to like, you, only, you see jail in movies and that, you think, fuck, I wonder if that's what it's like. And if you can ask someone what jail is like, they're always gonna exaggerate, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it was fucking, it was, it, was, it was a scary feeling too, you know? And um. Yeah, like when you ask what I feel, I was I was very intimidated too. Like you see some of the people in there, you know, like I was only in there for six months and some of these guys have been in there for years, you know what I mean? So yeah, it was very it was a very scary feeling to, to, to walk into that jail at such a young age, you know. Mm. The second time was just in November 2000 and I know the third time was just like I'd done a couple like one weeks, you know what I mean? Like a week in and then like I got out and then I'd go like I went back for two weeks, like just breach of bail in and they like you go back in and you get out a week later on like a on bail or a good behaviour bond, a couple of those, but the last sentence I did was I got sentenced to thirteen months 
but it was a non-parole period period of eight, and um, that was for armed with intent, common assault, affray. And that was, bro, I'm just sitting at home minding my own business, and I had these junkies, they fucking, they've come past my house, and they're trying to steal a pair of shoes out of my car. I had a pair, a pair of Nikes in the car, and um, we're, we're coming out the front, me and my partner, and it was a girl and a boy, and like I'm confronting them, like, you know, what he's doing, you know? And this guy's just taking a full swing at me. Like, I had my fence here. My car was parked on the grass. And he's taking a swing at me over the fence. He got me. And then, um, like, we've, after that, like, he sort of rushed around the back of the car. And me and my partner have come out of the gate. And, like, she went that way and I went that way. And his missus, the guy's girlfriend, has grabbed my missus by the hair. My missus was pregnant at the time with my son. So I've lost it, you know what I mean? So, like, I've walked over to her. And she's got my missus by the hair. And, like, I don't, I'm not one to hit women. Like, you know what I mean? But I cleaned her up. Like, I had to, you know what I mean? Like, she had my missus by the hair. My missus is pregnant. I didn't see any other way. I'm not going to sit there and go, hey, can you let her go? So, like, I've hit her. And um, she let go. And then her boyfriend, I got stuck into her boyfriend. And then um, his missus come back again, like, to my missus. And my missus is like, she's fucking pregnant. And I had a meat cleaver under the car, under the seat in the car. So I pulled the meat, I pulled the meat cleaver out. And I said, I said, you let her go, otherwise I'm going to cut your fucking hand off, you know? She's fucking pregnant, let her, let, let her go, I'm going to cut your hand off. So she let her go, and they like they walked off, and me and my partner got in the car, and we drove off. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to Bunnings to buy a plant for the house, to be honest. And um, on the way to Bunnings, I've got helicopters fucking above me. I've got, like, all these cars, like, boxed me in at the lights, and they've jumped out with their guns drawn, and they're fucking... I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on here? You know, like I knew I just had that incident, but what happened was these 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 two junkies, they got on the phone and they rang the police and they said that I randomly pulled over and attacked them on the street. So if, for me to sit there and say, no, I didn't, I would have had to have given a statement to say, look, this was my side of the story, but therefore that's going to end up them being charged. You know what I mean? So I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I can't do that. I can't sit there and say, hey, look, no, I was just at home. And he's, they're trying to break into my car and, I've, and, and, and he's hit me so I hit him back. I can't do that. It goes against everything I stand for. That's me giving them up. That's me talking to police and saying, hey, they, didn't, they, they done that. I can't do that. So I had to cop all that, you know what I mean? And the papers made it, like the papers made me out to look like the biggest piece of shit, you know what I mean? Like the papers said that I attacked some, some woman and she was pregnant. No, my missus was the pregnant one, you know what I mean? And they're saying they had a baby with them. They didn't have no baby with them. Like, by the state of them, I don't even think they would be allowed to have a baby. You should have seen them. But, um, so, yeah, I had to keep my mouth shut and just cop, cop everything, you know what I mean? So, I went to jail for it, and I'm sitting in jail thinking, fuck, look, this isn't fair, you know what I mean? Like, the system, the system's bullshit anyway, but, like, I, I just, I, I, yeah, I was just lost because I'm just kicking out home one day, and then the next thing you know, I'm in a jail cell because these these, these junkies, have, they got they got a flogging, and they've given me up because they couldn't hack both of them cop in a hiding. They were stealing, and they were trying to steal a pair of kids' shoes too. They weren't even my shoes. So, um, yeah, I went to jail for that in 2019. I was at, where was I at first? I went to Silverwater at first, again in Darcy, same routine. And then I went across the road to Dawn de Lois to the C2 part in J Block. I was there for about four and a half months. And then, um, the last four months of my sentence, they took me to uh, Park Lee, Area 4, the C2 part out the front. And I was there, yeah. For about four months, my missus gave birth to my son when I was in jail. Like, that shattered me as well, you know? Because I've been there for every single birth of my kids, but I couldn't be there. But, um, yeah, thank God for iPhones, man, because I could FaceTime, you know? <laughs> You're not meant to, but I couldn't miss the birth. Like, I couldn't be there in person, but I was there on the phone. Yeah, and I got released from then in November 2019. And, and I've just, when I got out, I was just, I just stayed home in that for a bit, you know. Didn't really do much, didn't speak to anybody. And then I started slowly getting back into music and started doing music again, started working. And then, yeah, I've just been laying low ever since. I haven't been getting into trouble, just... I stay home a lot, you know. I don't, I, don't, I don't like to go out. So if I go out, I'll go to the shop, get a haircut, or go get something to eat, or... Go go gravy's house, play on the game or whatever, and that's about it, really, man. And go to work. But yeah, going to jail for me was a massive wake up call. Um, I met some good boys in there. Never had any issues in there at all with anyone. Um, met some really, really, really good dudes in there. Um, 
yeah, it was just it was the, the hardest part about it was just being away from my family, um, not being able to see see the kids every day, only being able to see them on the weekends. I missed a lot of things with my daughter, my my youngest daughter, like growing up. Like, and it was, it was only it was only eight months, but in them eight months, like, she she done a lot of things that I missed, you know, like at school and certain things. So it was a massive wake up call, like, just to say, like, you know what I mean. You got to. There, there could have been other ways around me in that situation, you know what I mean? I could have just said, hey, look, fuck, take the shoes, you know what I mean? But then again, there's that part of me that comes in and says, nah, I'm not copping that. But, um, yeah, massive wake-up call going to jail. What do you reckon was the big difference between the going in the first time and the second time? Well, the first time I spent all my time in uh, maximum security. So, like, the whole, the timing's different. The people are different, you know what I mean? Like, you go to a C2 jail, like, you just, you, you find good boys, but, you know what I mean? And you stick with them, you know what I mean? Like, but everybody, everybody else there's just chasing drugs or fucking carrying on, just looking for a start, carrying on in the yard, just C2 jail. And you don't know who you're with in a C2 jail because they mix, they mix boneyarders, they mix dogs, they mix pedophiles, they mix rapists. That's how they push them back into the system, you know what I mean? From coming into, the, they've been in protection for so long. They want to come out of protection, so they'll put him into a C2 jail, which is like minimum security. And like they, they, they reintegrate him back into the main, you know what I mean? So you don't know who you're with, you don't know who's who. So that's why you try and find someone that you know and you stick with them, you know? But in maximum security, they've, like someone could be a dog, don't get me wrong, they could fly on the radar for a bit, but they won't fly on the radar forever, you know what I mean? Like there's always someone that's going to recognise someone. So and like in in Max, so you, you don't have that. You just you got you got good you got good boys in, in in good wings and good units. So, um, yeah, like Park Park Lee, the 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 C two there was just, uh, uh, like I said, I met some like real good boys. So I know I was staunch and that, but there was cunts there. You just think, fuck man, how are you even in jail? You know what I mean? And then like I I seen people myself, like buzz up at at Dawn de Lois. And say that say that screws look get me out of here, you know what I mean? I'm I'm scared this and that. And then I get to Park Lee and they're there, they're in the main, and I'm like, I seen you, man. Like, I seen your I seen your silver water. You buzzed up. You you took off. Like, you're back in the main. And I tell the boys, yeah, like stay away from me. Don't talk to him. You know what I mean? He's, he's a weak cunny bail. But it was a massive difference, like being so young going in there, and then like it, rules of like things have changed. You know what I mean? Like back then when I went to jail, you couldn't even say the word dog. You know what I mean? You couldn't even say to someone, oh, yeah, this cunt's a dog. Like, you have to have proof that he was a dog. You know what I mean? These days, now you go to a C2, everyone's calling everyone a dog. And they do it as jokes. Like, they do it as a joke. Like, they walk into a room, yeah, what are you doing, your dog? You know what I mean? And they laugh about it. And it's like, nah, man, like, it's a breach. You can't do that. Like, I don't know. Some people are just brought up different. Some people are built different. Like, yeah. So it's changed a lot. It has changed. Like, you ask anyone that's been in jail back then and been in jail now, they'll tell you the same thing. You know, it's changed. So. What do you think is your biggest life lesson from going into prison? Um, just think before you act. Like that. Like if I had just like defused that whole situation with them, with them junkies and that, you know what I mean? And just, just thought if I if I had just thought it out more instead of just going straight out there and fucking getting stuck into it, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't have ended up in jail, you know what I mean? If I thought about it and said, you know what I mean? My missus was pregnant. I had a good job at the time. I had a mad job at the time, and it's like, yeah, like I missed out. I missed out on my son being born because of that, all that sort of shit. So that was a massive lesson to me. Like I miss the most important part of, of life was seeing my partner give birth to another one of my kids. You know, so, um, I was robbed of that. So that was a lesson for me. You know what I mean? That's, that was a massive lesson. And a few years ago, you were like diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. Can you tell me like what was that like and what got you through it? It was hectic, man, like, it was crazy, like, I sort of knew something was wrong because, like, every time I used to, I used to eat, I'd eat my, my lunch or my dinner and that, and I'd, just, I'd vomit straight away, like, after eating, like, I'd sit down and then I'd vomit, I'd spew up, and I'd feel, what the fuck is going on, and I was losing heaps of weight, you know what I mean, like, I remember seeing one of my mates one day at, at Hurstville, and he's like, fuck, what are you doing, are you chopping in, and I'm like, what do you mean, and he's like, bro, you've lost heaps of weight, and, like, I looked down at myself, and I looked at myself in the reflection the window, at, of the window, and I thought, fuck, you know what, I have lost heaps of weight, and then I've, like, I, I, I sort of ignored it, and then I was at work one day, and I, was, I lifted up this ladder, and I felt like a pop in my back, I thought, what the fuck was it, and it was, like, it was painful, you know, so, like, 
I left work, I went home, and then I went to the I went to the to the doctor, and then um, he gave me some painkillers, sent me home, and then like it was like three o'clock in the morning, man, I, like the pain was unbearable, so I went straight to emergency, and the doctor's like, oh, you slipped the disc. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you slipped the disc in your back. I'm like, oh, all right then. So he gave me some more painkillers. They sent me home. And then um, my work were like, look, you, when can you come back to work? I'm like, I don't know. Like, they're telling me I've slipped the disc. And then he's like, we're going to book in for an ultrasound to find out what, like, what's actually going on. Because my work thought I was faking it, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, sweet, whatever. So yeah, they I got booked in for this ultrasound. And the doctor's fucking running his finger around my back. And he's looking at the nurse, he keeps looking at the nurse, then looking down, and I knew something was wrong, you know, and I said to him, I said, what's wrong, you know? And he's been all quiet about it. And um, they finished up, and then I jumped on a train from Cronulla to Hurstville, and then by the time I got to Hurstville, like where my, my actual GP was, the, the people rang me, and they're like, go straight to your GP. I'm like, all right, I'm here now, you know, I'll go see him. So I walked in there, and he had the paperwork from them, they must have faxed it through. And it was an envelope and that, and he's like, I need you to go straight to the emergency. I'm like, yeah, well, what's going on? And he's like, I need you to go to emergency. I'll be, like, you got to tell me, you know? He's like, I can't tell you. And like, I, I sort of like shut the door, lock the door. I said, listen, you're going to fucking tell me what's going on, you know? Like, I'm not leaving until you tell me. And he's like, you've got cancer. You need to go straight to emergency. And I was like, bullshit. And he's like, no, you, you do. You've got cancer on your kidneys. I'm like, fuck, man. So I, I walked out, opened up the envelope, and it said, like, I had a 12, 12 centimetre cyst on the top of my kidney and a seven centimeter cyst on the bottom of it and one of them was that big it was blocking my bladder from my kidney so um yeah man i fucking i rang my partner and i'm, I'm like oh, i've got to go to the hospital she's like what's wrong i'm like i've got cancer that's what the paper's saying and even she thought it was a joke you know she's like bullshit i'm like no i'm serious i got cancer i've got to go to the emergency so yeah i've got to emergency and i took in the letter and that and they've like full rushed me straight in they had me in this room they're doing all the, like checks on my stomach and fucking I had a nurse, she was playing with my balls, it was crazy. And then um, I was on the ward for about two months. And then, um, like, the results come back, they actually, it's like, you know, it's confirmed it's cancer. And I used to sit there in bed at night thinking, oh, fuck, man, I'm only 26, like 27. And I got non Hodgkinson lymphoma cancer. And I'm thinking, like, where do I go from here? Like, what, what, what have I done in life that's so fucking bad to deserve? Like, all of this, you know, my mum dying, not knowing my dad. Not knowing any of my extended family, fucking now I've got cancer, like, I'm doing the best I can, you know, I'm getting a job, I'm off drugs, I'm fucking, I'm showing, you know what I mean? And I was sitting there, fuck, like, what do I do? And it was just an empty feeling, because I didn't know if I was, like, I wasn't scared to die, you know what I mean? Like, everyone's got to die, you got to accept that. But I was scared to leave behind, like, my kids and my missus, you know? Like, it was, I was scared for them, like, how are they going to do this without me? Like, it's not fair, my kids are going to grow up without their dad. I was thinking, like, full stupid, you know? And then um, they let me out of hospital. Like I started doing chemo while I was in the hospital, and I started like losing my hair. And then like they let me out of hospital, so I went home. And I used to lay in the room at home, and like because I, I was my, my body was weak. Like I lost fucking heaps of weight. I had no hair on my anywhere on my body. I was hairless, and I was so weak I couldn't do anything. Like I, I couldn't shower myself. My partner used to have to shower me. She used to have to change me. She used to like she used to have to do everything for me. She had to feed me, and. Um, I used to lay in the room all day and I used to feel guilty, you know what I mean? Because I was stuck in this room and my my kids are out running around the house and I, I used to feel guilty that I couldn't be out there with them. I couldn't take them out to the park and I, and I used to beat myself up over it. So I, start, I slowly started slipping into depression, you know what I mean? And then like, and I was smoking, like I was smoking pot too, like heaps of pot because it helped with the chemo, you know what I mean? Like um, I had all different sort of pot people just giving me heaps of pot oil, so I was just going stupid on it. And I think that's what helped like, make me go a bit funny, you know? So I slipped like, real bad into depression. I felt guilty that I was in that room, stuck sick, and my kids were out there, you know what I mean? I couldn't do nothing with them. So yeah, I had a full bad mental breakdown, and like, I, ended up, I ended up in a psych ward down at Cogra. I was in there for like, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks. And then like, they, let me, they let me out after a while, put me on meds and that, and then... Um, then I seen I seen another doctor, the cancer doctor, and he's like, oh, I heard you had a bit of a breakdown. I'm like, yeah, you know, like this cancer shit's just getting like it's playing with my head. You know, I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. I don't. And by then I'd been doing chemo, and he's like, oh, I got some good news. I'm like, what? He's like, we've done tests. Like when when I was in the mental place, the psych ward, I went for a PET scan to see if, if the lumps were still there, 
And he goes, I've got some good news. I'm like, yeah, what's wrong? He's like, your yeah, PET scan results come back. I'm like, yeah, he's like, your tumor's 100% gone. And like that minute, like I felt a massive sign of relief. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. And then he's like, but you got to continue to do the chemo to keep it away, you know? I'm like, all right, sweet. So I was doing chemo every two weeks after that. But every weekend, I'd have to have a big fucking jab in my stomach. And that was in 2017, 2017, and I only just finished doing cancer treatment when I was in jail. I was still doing cancer, like chemo when I was in jail, like not enough to lose my hair, but little doses of it, you know, to keep it away. But um, the doctor told me, he's like, the cancer you've got, um, we can't, we can't cure it. We can only treat it. You know what I mean? So it's going to come back. He goes, so you just got to prepare yourself for it. It could come back in five years or 10 years. It could come back in five months or, but he goes, it's going to come back. You know what I mean? He goes, so you have to do chemo again. You're going to lose your hair again. So, um, and that'll happen till like the day I die. So I'll have it for the rest of my life, which is, it's not a problem. You know what I mean? Cause like, if I let it, if I let it beat me up, then you know what I mean? There's no point in, in, in trying to fucking live life. So I just live life like the best I can. And when it comes, it comes, you know, I know how to deal with it because I've dealt with it before. Like, yeah, but it was very scary. It was, it was a massive, massive wake up call as well. Like it was very to get you to get my life together. Like I'm too young to be fucking around doing stupid shit, and then like then I got cancer coming along. Like that could have killed me. You know what I mean? And I I achieved like really nothing. So, mm. yeah. Thanks for sharing that, man. No, you're up, bro. Yeah, this has been there for you. For a while now, man. Do you want to talk a bit about her? And like, I guess what I really want to know is, you know, you've got what five kids with her. Mm. What's your insight into having a successful relationship? So I met her. She was in year seven. I was in year eight. That's the first time we ever met. I was. She was thirteen. I was fourteen. And like we were together all through school, and then um, we sort of went our separate ways after school. You know, as people do, and then. Um, she went back to like to New Zealand and then I stayed here obviously and then she come back and then we were like as soon as she come back like we got straight straight back to talking and that and then um been together ever since um like we've had our ups and downs like no the, not every relationship's perfect you know what I mean like and ours isn't but um but like we've had our ups and downs and arguments and fights and whatever but um I've realized the the the, the easiest way to have a, have a good relationship is just honesty. You just got to be honest and trust. You know what I mean? Like it takes it takes it takes a long time to build trust, but it only takes one second to fuck it all up. And once you do that, I mean, it's a fucking long way back to get that trust. You know what I mean? So um, just honesty and just every, yeah, just be open. Like don't hide things. Like you know what I mean? Like I've lied. You know what I mean? Fucking I've been dishonest. I've done I've done it all, but. Um, <clears throat> like she's been there through some of the like the worst times of my life, you know what I mean? Like she was the only one that was there. Like family members weren't there, my mates weren't there. Like but through all of it, she was there. When I had cancer, like she was there. She stayed with me through every time I went to jail. You know what I mean? Like and she was with me before I was like doing music and doing graffiti and and, and doing all that. You know what I mean? She's not just some girl that she's come along and thought, hey, like this guy's doing this and that. I want to be with him. Nah, she was there before all of that, you know. So I know it's real. If I was to get, if I was to be with a girl, I got with a girl six months ago. I wouldn't know if she'd want me for like, you know, the image of I'm with Enter the, the musician or or I'm with Michael, you know. So this this girl, my partner, she's been there before all of that shit. So that's that's how you know it's real. And once you find something that like you know deep down it's real, you hold on to that. You know what I mean? Because the girls these days, man. Phew, Tell you what, man, they can be fucking dangerous. You know, like, they can be dangerous. My, one of my best mates, he was with a girl for fucking five, six years. And they had a bit of an argument. And next thing you know, she's she's left him and she's with a bloke that she's seen on visits in jail while she was visiting him. She found out who he was and got his fucking details and then moved him into her house and all of this, you know what I mean? Like, and these two have got fucking three kids together. Like, that's what I mean, you know what I mean? Like, girls are, the girls are dangerous, you know? A pair of fake tits and lips can fucking do some fucking serious damage to your mental health, so... Um, yeah, you gotta find something that's real.
someone that just sees through all the bullshit, all the bad, and sees the good, that little bit of good in you, they see it, so, and you hold on to it. So that's what I've done. So, yeah. You've obviously got a, lot, a huge fan base, man, mm. and uh, a lot of the people that follow you, they might not be doing the right things, man. Like, do you have any advice for those sort of kids? Um, yeah, I've got heaps of advice. Um, it's just not like whatever you think, like whatever you think's worth it to get by, and it's gonna end you. If it's gonna end you, end you up in jail, or like you know what I mean, it's it's not, it's not worth it. You know, like the, it's 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 worth going out there, getting a job, and having on. It's, it's worth giving it a crack. You know, like you haven't tried it yet, so why not try it? There's no such thing as a, sex, a successful drug dealer. They're all over, They're all in jail, or they're dead. You know what I mean? Or they're dobbing on people to keep their shit going. Um, like I, I dealt drugs a long time growing up, you know, like from 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 pot to ecstasy to pills, ah, uh, to to pharmaceuticals, to heroin to ice. You know what I mean? I've sold everything, and it's just a shit game. You know what I mean? It's a fucking mugs game. It's disgusting. Um, you know, you find yourself making all this money, and you're selling drugs, but then you find yourself dabbling in the drugs. You know what I mean? You start you, you start smoking this, or you start popping that. You know what I mean? And off. I had a massive, massive prescription pill addiction, you know what I mean? Like, man, Xanax and Valium and, and, and Endones, poof. Mate, I was a mess, you know what I mean? And I've had my, I have my issues with other drugs as well. But um, there's, there's, that, that's what it all leads to at the, at the end of the day, you know? Like, doing, it's, it's, there's only one road that, that it leads to, it's either addiction, death, jail. So the the advice I'd give is just you know what I mean give give something legit a crack you know what I mean like if you can get if you can get a job do it if you can go to TAFE do it if you can get a trade do it you know what I mean like always because you know you're gonna get paid regardless you know what I mean like so yeah just just yeah just give it a crack man like yeah you gotta break the cycle that's what it's about it's about breaking the cycle you know like we can't change if we don't change ourselves so my, one of my very good friends. He grew up just like me, you know, nothing, scumbag houser. And now he works um, as a youth mentor in Reby, the juvie. And he told me, I, go, I said to him, I said, bro, what do you do this shit for? You know, like, fair enough, like, you're helping out these kids and that, but, like, fuck working as an officer. And he said, it's not about working as an officer. He goes, you cannot build the system from outside. You, you cannot re rebuild the system from outside these walls. He goes, I have to do it from the inside, you know. And I sort of got what he was saying then, you know. And I went in there and had a talk to some of the kids in there and... You know, like some of these kids, they got nothing. That's all they know. That's all they're gonna know. And you can try and talk to these kids about, hey, what are you gonna do when you get out? You're gonna go, and they like, they laugh at you. You know what I mean? I ain't getting a job, this and that. So yeah, just um, break the cycle, man. That's the best, best advice. Look into the future. Like, what do you want to achieve? Whether it's like music, family, financial. Like, where to from here for you? Next year, I want to go into study to be a full-time youth worker, that's what I want to do, that's my, that's that's the end the end game for me. Um, Music-wise, I don't know, man, I'm sort of at the end of my, like, not, I wouldn't say career, but I'm sort of at the end of, at the end of the road with music, like, um, I've done everything you can do with music, you know, like, I've had two number one albums, I've, I've travelled the country multiple times doing, like, shows, I've, I've, like, you know, I've hit millions of views on YouTube, I've, I've, I've done everything I wanted to do with it, um, so I just I don't know yet. There's not really much left to do with with music. Maybe I'll you know drop a couple more tracks. Maybe another album. Um, yeah, just I don't know. I really want to get. I really want to focus on helping like the youth and that. You know what I mean? Like being a mentor f for them. Um, but we, when I do music, it's just a way of me expressing myself. So there'll be more music to come. But um, I don't think I'll I'll chase music full time. And it's it's it's, it's very hard these days too to like get the views I used to get, you know what I mean? Because there's so many, there's so many rappers these days and they're doing massive numbers, like they're doing huge numbers. Like the, the whole game has changed. It's not, um, it's not really Aussie rap anymore, you know? Everyone's giving it a crack. Like you've got Asian boys giving it a crack, Islanders. So it's, it's sort of all mixed, which is mad. It's hectic, don't get me wrong, but it's just real hard, you know, to, to crack, to crack big numbers because you've got these young up and comers, you know what I mean? And they're getting opportunities that we never got growing up. Um, so they're taking the whole rap game to a whole new level, which is good. Like, there's not, I, I, I can't sit here and say a bad thing about it. It's, it's mad. Like, I'm glad these young guys are getting the opportunities that we never got. You know what I mean? Like, they're getting in store JD signings and Culture Kings fucking voucher, all that sort of shit. You know what I mean? They're getting.
people are paying them to wear their brand. It's hectic. That's mad. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. With my music, I just, I just do what I can. You know, I don't do it to, to, for views and follows and likes and all that sort of stuff. I just do it to express myself. So, yeah, probably another album, a couple more songs, and then, yeah, I'll, get, I'll fully, I'll focus into my uh, youth work next year. Mm. Like everything I say in my music, it's it's not fabricated. It's not made up. Like I'm not proud of what I've done or what I used to do to get by. But like, people say, well, you had an option. You could have got a job, this and that. But no one's gonna hire a kid that's got fucking tattoos on his face and doesn't even have a, a year nine equivalent in high school. Like they're not, they're not gonna hire a kid. So like certain situations, we just had to grab grab by hand while we'll, while it presented itself. You know, like I tried getting a job when I was a kid growing up. No, no one wanted to hire me. You know what I mean? Like. So turning to, to doing crime and, and, and selling drugs and, and, and doing all that, that was like, I didn't see anything wrong with it. You know what I mean? Like, it was normal where we grew up. It was normal in our household. My brothers used to do it. Both my older brothers done it, you know what I mean? They taught me how to do it. Like, they gave me my start, you know what I mean? So it was like, I wouldn't say like a family affair sort of thing, but like, you know what I mean? My eldest brother done it, then my middle brother, and then he passed it down to me, and then... You know what I mean? I've done it for a very long time, and it's a shit game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm not gonna lie, like I've been robbed before. You know what I mean? I've robbed other people. I've been robbed for my stuff. I've robbed people for their stuff. It's a tip. For t- it's a shit game. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, yeah. It's just I talk about that in my music, and people are like, oh, it's bullshit. This and that. You know what I mean? It's like it's not bullshit. I've got nothing to lie about. You know what I mean? Like, and then it's just things. Things happen in the streets that, like, the average person, they don't know, they don't understand it. You know what I mean? Like, they they grew up different. Their mum and dad went to school or uni, and then they they put them in through private school, and then like they don't see what we see when we open our front door. You know what I mean? Like, so they don't understand it, so they just judge it. They're like, yeah, done no, it. He's a, he's a liar. He's never seen a gun before. There's no there's no there's no guns in, in in Sydney just because Sydney's like, not like America where they've got like projects and big fucking skyscraper buildings it doesn't mean we're not there's no guns and there's no shootings and, and, and sort of that sort of shit happening you know what I mean so like we were 15, 14 getting around with guns handguns and sawn off shotguns and, and all that sort of shit you know what I mean like that's not a lie we, we, we had all that sort of stuff and like we didn't know what to do with it back then but we had them you know what I mean so like when we talk about it people laugh at us like yeah they're lying it's like we're not lying we've got nothing to lie about like you know what I mean? We we used to think it was fun to have guns. We say, yeah, I got a gun at home, you know. So, but these days now, it's like you talk about it and people just like liar. Even even like some of the some some boys I know that are that are actually about it. You know what I mean? That like I know for myself. You know what I mean? That these guys these guys will kill you. You know what I mean? And they're rappers. Like, but they don't sit there and fucking bridge up and and, and make it known. But like they might mention something in their song about how they've got a gun or something, and then I see comments, yeah, this guy's a liar, and I'm thinking, bro, if only you knew, you know what I mean? Like this guy will shoot you in your face. So the yeah, I don't know. It's just music is music these days. So mm. everything that is just put into music is it's it's got to be authentic. So that's where I try to go with my music. So yeah. Sick, bro. Hmm. I appreciate having you. No, sit down. Thanks for having me. Mad pump, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much, bro.